Welcome to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's lecture, we will talk about the brief introduction about the course. So, we live in a digital era. Everything uh, in our life is involved with some digital systems, right. For example, if you go for any communication, for some business transaction, some uh, traffic control, even this online class, everything involves digital system, digital computers, right. Not only that, any medical systems, telecommunications, satellite system, airspace, everywhere there are involved electronic designs, right. So, if you know into these digital systems, uh, it basically have a GUI through which it communicate or interface with the users. Internally, it has a complex electronic circuits, right, which can process set of data, compute certain uh, information and pass the result to the uh, users again through user interface. So, what is there inside in these digital systems? In these digital systems, you have transistors, okay. And how this transistor works is basically a switch. So, and how this digital system works, it assumes uh, everything in terms of binary, right. So, you always assume the numbers are basically 0 or 1. Although the electronic signals are analog in nature, so there are analog to digital converter, and then you, you have the device that take this digital or discrete representation of this analog signals and process it, compute or whatever it does, ok. So, a digital system that uh, is a system that manipulates discrete elements of information represented internally in binary form. So, once we try to understand this digital system, we need to understand what is there inside this digital systems, right. And it is basically transistor and in specifically it is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor or MOSFET, ok. So, uh, what it does uh, is basically forms a switch in high level, right. Let us try to understand what is there in MOS, it, it is the structure is like this, ok. So, it has a base, there is a source, there is a drain and there is a gate structure is like this, right. So, this base is basically silicon and on top of that there is silicon dioxide, ok. And once we apply voltage to this MOS structure through this gate, either it will conduct the electron or the current from source to drain or it not, right. So, it based on the what kind of charge you give to this uh, particular gate, ok. And based on this uh, type of this uh, transistors, there are two type of transistor PMOS and NMOS, ok. So, let us see how this PMOS and NMOS works internally. So, in NMOS, it is basically negative MOS transistor. So, it base have the negative charges, ok. And whenever you give say negative charges uh, through ground, what will happen? It displays this electron from this region, right. So, as a result, there is no conduction of current from this source to drain, ok. Whereas, when you give a positive charge here, so this will attract this uh, electrons in this uh, negative charges in this base and as a result they comes here and as a result there is the conduction happen. So, it basically closed, right. This is kind of say closed, this is open, right. So, if you understand, so whenever you give a positive charge here, it is basically closed whenever you give a negative charge through this ground, then through the gate it is basically does not, it is open, right. So, it is basically represented as like this that whenever your x is equal to 1, it close, right. That means, it is conduct the current, it is closed, right. And whenever you are give 0, this scenario, in this case, this is open. So, it is kind of working as a switch and it can be controlled by the value this the voltage that you are giving through this gate either the value 0 or 1 based on that it will either become open or 1 or 0, right. In the PMOS it is opposite one, it is a positive tra transistor, positive MOS transistor. So, it forms a open circuit when it receives a uh, non-negligible voltage that is positive one and closed when it receives a 0 voltage, ok. Let us try to understand. So, in PMOS in the base you have positive charges, right. So, if you give positive charges here, it will deflect and this become open, 
the connection between source student is open right and whenever you give a negative charge this attracts this positive charges attracts and it become a conductor right this is closed. So, what is happening here whenever you are giving 0 it is closed whenever it is 1 it is open. On the other hand in NMOS whenever you are giving 0 it is open and when you give 1 it is closed. Right. So, the PMOS uh, shown here that whenever you are giving 0 it is closed and whenever it is 1 it is open. Right. So, this is how basically this transistor VFs. Okay. So, internally you have this transistor PMOS, NMOS, we have also CMOS. So, uh, they are basically either conduct or do not conduct the current okay. and based on their behavior we can actually just use them as a switch whether is in for a certain value it will either be open or close. In once we develop digital system, we basically have to use these transistors. We will try to use this transistor in a combinations and based on the specific interconnections, I can get a different kind of gate behavior, right. So, in the digital system, we usually abstract this behavior of these transistors. We, we take a combination of the transistors and we consider them as a specific gate. We will talk about that AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, NOR gate and so, so many others. Okay. So, how specifically I can make these connections? Uh, I have uh, one example of NOR gate. Okay. So, uh, suppose your input in the NOR gate is A and B and it value can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 and this will be your output. Okay. So, uh, to uh, realize a NOR gate, I use this 2 PMOS transistor in series and 2 NMOS transistor in parallel. Right? So, these are uh, transistor 1, this is transistor 2, this is NMOS transistor 1 and this is NMOS transistor 2. They are connected in parallel. Right? So, this A is connected actually here okay, to this MOS. Okay? So, now this here always we connect the voltage source and this is the ground that means 0. Okay? This is the uh, positive voltage is 1. Uh, and this is the ground okay, or 0. So, now uh, because we know that this uh, P MOS conducts whenever we give 0 right otherwise it is open. So, if the value of A is 0, B and 0 then only this current can flow through this to this point right. So, then I will get 1 here right that is my output. So, only when your both value of A and B is 0 then only my output will be 1. Okay. Whenever the value of uh, A or B 0, 1 or 1, 0 or 1, 1, they will be open. So, this VDD won't reach here. On the other hand, this an, we have an NMOS gate here. In NMOS, it is basically whenever it is 1, it is conduct. right? Uh, so, if I give 1 here, then this, this will conduct and this 0 will be realized here. Similarly, if B A is 1, then also this will make the conduct and this uh, 0 will be realized here. Okay. So, that means whenever is one of the value is 1, uh, my value will be 0. Right? So, this will be 0. If both of them is also 1, both will conduct, but we will get the same charge. So, this is nothing but NOR gate in, in digital design. Okay. So, similarly, I can make some different connections to get the behavior of AND gate OR gate or any other gates. So, this is what we usually do that although uh, the transistor PMOS or NMOS transistors are there internally, but we realize everything in terms of gates where if uh, combination of transistors make this behavior. Okay. So, in a uh, computer science perspective or digital perspective, we are not much bothered about what happened internally electronically. We always assume uh, this basic level of our design is gates which is AND gate OR gate NAND gate NOR gate and so on. Okay. So, uh, if we look into this evolution of this electronic system, uh, the first transistor came is on 1960s. So, it is kind of 40 years, 60 years from now, right. In the 60 years, it is a huge revolution, right. So, just to show you how much the progress happened, uh, we have some dis, uh, uh, some photo here which is on 1946 before transistor comes. The, there is a electronic system or a electrical system which there in the entire room right which occupy the entire room. Whereas, 
we have the static stain FPJ boat which come in 2015 or 16 that time which has 30 billion of transistors and its size will be less uh, we, we can hold this particular board in your hand ok. So, that is the kind of evaluation that is enabled by this MOS transistors ok. But once you look into this 30 billion transistors how do you develop such systems that consist of 30 billion transistors obviously you cannot do it having a design at transistor level. So, what usually we do we basically take a abstraction behavioral abstraction right. So, we although there are 30 billion transistors we will never design our circuit of 30 billion transistor on ourselves. What we will do instead of this transistor level design as I show you that abstraction where you can realize uh, 4 transistor uh, making a specific connection is basically AND gate or an OR gate and we can develop our design in the gate level ok. So, this is what is one level of abstraction instead although in the hardware it is actually transistor level design, but we will realize our design in the gate level ok. Even for a 30 billion transistors a gate level design will have a billion of gates ok. So, that is also it is difficult to develop uh, at the gate level. So, we need to go a little bit more higher abstraction level right and that terms uh, abstraction called registers transfer level. So, at this level again uh, we do not have the detailed description in the gate level what we assume that our description will be register transfer level what does it mean? It means you have a behavior where you have the register which hold the data right it is a memory and then every cycle of every clock cycle you define what will be the next value of those registers in terms of the value of the register in the current state ok. So, you basically explain that uh, you probably have uh, R 1 equal to R 2 plus R 3. So, you will write this key if whatever the value of register R 2 and whatever the value of register R 3 that will be added and that value will go into register R 1 right. But this adder when you go into this course you will see it has a gate level representation. So, we are not going to explain the gate level representation uh, of the adder indirectly I will just use the term A plus B or R2 plus R3 right. So, this is where the register transfer is a much abstract level and this is where the most of the time design starts. Then you can go more higher level which is basically behavior level where you can explain your specification in say C, C plus plus or Python language and then um, uh, that can be uh, converted into RTL. So, one, one thing that we are talked about only the abstraction right. So, although it is transistor level we come up to the gate level then from the gate level the RTL level to the behavior level, but there, there will be somebody who can convert your design from RTL to gate level there will be somebody who can automatically convert your design from gate level to the transistor level right. So, that is what is called electronic design automation ok. So, this is a software which is developed by uh, the, uh, uh, some computer scientist which can be utilized to convert this register transfer level automatically into gate level and there are, this is called logic synthesis. Similarly, you have a gate level design which can be converted into transistor level which is physical synthesis tool. There are many uh, courses that talks about this uh, synthesis process, but that is not the objective of this course. This particular slide just to highlight you that how this overall digital system being developed although internally it are lot transistors ok. So, in a digital design course what we should learn that is something we have to understand right. So, as I mentioned it is a billion of transistors are there, but uh, internally how exactly it works right. So, that we should understand. So, in a digital design you primarily have three components ok. One is basically the combinational unit you have the sequential elements and the finite state machine. or FSM. Right. So, so far whatever I discuss uh, in terms of transistor is basically combination unit 
right. So, it is basically the interconnections of gates you can in the gate level you can assume and so the gates are connected uh, according to the behavior you intended and whenever you change one of the input the output will be updated okay based on the recalculations okay so in the conventional unit we need to understand how you basically develop various component of a digital designs right for example how do you develop a adder how do you develop a multiplayer what will be the multiplexer demultiplexer encoder and so on right decoder and many other components so that what is the behavior of them in hardware how do you realize them right so that part we are going to understand also in the conversation you need uh, the important thing is that how do you basically uh, represent your numbers right so you can uh, although it's a binary but there can be different base it can be base 2 base 8 uh, base 16 or many other way right i uh, format floating point format and so on and uh, those things we need to understand okay on the sequential part we need to understand how do you store these elements right it's basically memory in this part we need to understand what is register what is flip flop what is counter how do you store this memory right how this memory works internally and how to utilize them okay and once you try to develop a system or digital system uh, you you have to understand this the sequential element it works it is basically controlled by the clock right. So, whenever the clock comes uh, the, the clock is like a signal like this right. So, uh, this is called positive edge this is the negative edge this is again positive edge this is repeat right this is one clock period. So, usually this uh, this is the memory uh, or the flip flop uh, whenever this clock positive edge come. Uh, the whatever the input value of this is that get updated here ok. So, this is how this uh, flip flops works right. So, this this is get only updated when the next clock come right and then this value is stable and this is the input of the combinational unit. So, whenever this value changes as I mentioned combinational unit will recalculate the value. So, based on that this value will be the output value will be again recalculated and what is the output of this recalculated? Uh, 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 of this combination unit it basically is nothing but the input of this register for the next clock right or it can be the output. So, every clock you update the content of this register based on this value this uh, combination unit can recalculate the value your output value and this value I'll either will be go to the output or that will come back to the register uh, in the next clock right this is how this uh, sequence element works. So, once you develop a bigger system it is not that uh, you want to update all the register in all the clock because you may not want to update the registers or you may have many combination unit and the output of this combination unit you do not want to use in every clock right. So, if that kind of situation happen you need some kind of a controller right that will tell us in every clock what are the operations you want to execute in the hardware. Remember in hardware whatever the components are there they are all running in parallel right. So, you cannot stop them how do I stop this kind of I, I can stop them is basically ignoring their value right. So, and how do we ignore this value N just ignoring the value not storing into the register in a particular clock right. So, this registers or the memory units have enable signal as well. So, if you give enable equal to 0 that means you are not do not want to up update that particular register in that particular time clock right. So, this is how this whole uh, system can be controlled right and th for that you need a finite state machines which says that you have a behavior you have a digital system that will uh, behave like this in clock 1 it will do this this operations then it will go to uh, state 2 in state 2 it will op execute this many operations and then it will go to state 3 or state 4 based on the certain conditions right this is what is called FSM. So, if you combine these three that will give you a digital system ok. So, in this course we are going to learn this combination unit sequential elements in detail and then how to basically develop a RTL design or register transfer level design which will basically have a data path component uh, memory unit. So, this combinedly you can say data path right and this is basically the FSM is the controller. 
So, when you develop a RTL which is basically data path, data path and controller right. So, you have basically RTL is nothing but data path plus controller and then we need to understand how to develop this FSM, how to develop a design combining these two together right. So, this course will going to cover precisely these three things in detail ok. Uh, so, this is the same thing that internally you have to store this data most of the time binary, you have the memory, you have the boolean functions of the compression unit and a finite state machine that will control the behavior. So, we are going to learn these things uh, in this course in detail. One thing we can uh, always ask why computer science students uh, to learn this hardware or digital design. Uh, first of all, once you you have to understand whatever software you develop, they runs on in hardware, right? So unless you know how hardware works, sometime you may not get the specific performance, right? So that is one thing. So many a time you will see that your ML does not uh, take lot of time, it does not converge, it does not get the result on in at that time because of certain uh, restriction of the hardware, right? So that part we should understand. Not only that. Um, uh, the tool that I talked about the synthesis tool, this are very complex software. So, it basically uh, convert this uh, behavior in one abstraction level to the next abstraction level, right. So, until you know the how this uh, this circuit is or the digital design is, you won't able to develop the software as well, right. So, and these softwares I just talked about synthesis softwares, you also have verification software that ba basically verify certain uh, correctness property in a design you have test, uh, testing softwares that basically once your IC is fabricated, it just check whether your uh, IC is uh, functionally correct or not, is there any manufacturing defect or not. Also there are security aspects. So, you have this electronic design automation tool for all aspects and when you try to develop those softwares, uh, you need to understand the fundamental of uh, circuit or fundamental of the working of the circuit. So, that is why you, the computer science student also learn should learn this digital design in detail. In the syllabus uh, as I mentioned that I will cover this combinational part, sequential part and the FSM part. Uh, uh, so, uh, in the combinational part we have to understand the fundamental theory, the switching algebra, how do you store these numbers, the number systems and their encoding. Then we will see how what is the Boolean algebra and logic minimization, how do you basically minimize this uh, combinational circuit, there are many methods uh, and then we will also cover this different combinational block as I mentioned multiplexer, demultiplexer, encoder, decoder, adder and so on. And then you can actually I will say so in detail how these uh, modules are developed. I also introduce the Verilog, the language, hardware description language through which you can write or develop hardware. And for every such combination unit, we will explain what is the Verilog code for that, ok. In the second of the course, we will talk about the sequential element as I mentioned flip flops, register, counter, then finite state machines uh, and their minimizations and also the state machines and then also the RTL design with few examples. Again in all component, we will basically cover their Verilog implementation, we will give you provide you the Verilog implementation, the source code as well. So, uh, uh, I hope this course will be useful for all of you and will be uh, active in the forum where we can always answer any doubts you have and I will wish you a happy learning in this course. Thank you. Mm -hmm.